Hello, everyone. Welcome to Shell Point Today for Thursday, February 25th. I'm Dan Philgreen. On today's show, we'll hear from Professor Adrian Kerr about his class on Pakistan and Afghanistan. And Paul Neighbors will tell us about some new computer clinics that are available for all residents. But first, we want to remind you that there's a special outing tomorrow. That's the 32nd Annual Naples Quilt Show. Court pickups begin at 8.30 a.m. on the island for a trip to the Naples Merchant Small to enjoy this judged event. You'll get to see quilts from vendors and boutiques, take part in an auction, and see demos. Whatever it is about quilts that tickles your fancy, they've got you covered. The cost of the outing is $14 with lunch on your own, and you'll return to Shell Point at approximately 2.30 p.m. If you love quilts, make sure you're signed up for this trip, because missing it might make you feel like a wet blanket. Los Angeles, California is hailed as the center of the film and television industry. Its nearly 4 million people make it home to a vast array of people and cultures. If you've ever visited LA or have been interested in traveling there, then you might want to attend the Do You Know Your Neighbor event tomorrow in the Social Center at 2.15. Light refreshments will be served as you visit with your Shell Point neighbors who share the same interest in the City of Angels. No doubt you've passed by the big construction site northwest of the estuary in recent weeks to see the buzz of progress. This beautiful structure is starting to take shape, and soon it will be the new home of the Shell Point Golf Club. But this massive building has so much more potential, and you'll get to hear all about it this Friday. Shell Point's Chief Operating Officer, Scott Moore, along with Al Slickers, Director of Hospitality, and Bob Southern of Project Development, will provide construction updates and an outline of all the services that will be provided at the new Shell Point Clubhouse. To get all the latest updates, make sure to be at the Village Church at 1015 this Friday. Looking ahead to this weekend, on Saturday there will be a LifeQuest discussion group about our natural environment. Being in, on, or near the water can have a significant effect on our overall well-being. Join Janine Hammond, Manager of Resident Support Services, and share your experiences and learn about the opportunities that abound in our beautiful corner of Southwest Florida. This LifeQuest discussion group will meet in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Pakistan has a great and glorious history. Its area at one time contained the largest set of city-states in the world. The history of Pakistan and Afghanistan is greater than what we see today. Professor Adrian Kerr is eager to talk about their history and where they are today immersed in political, religious, and tribal struggles. He visits with Terry Koleth now to talk about the first three sessions beginning March 3rd. Hello, I'm Terry Koleth and I'm here with Professor Adrian Kerr. We're talking about a course of big interest and it is the story of Pakistan and Afghanistan a three-session course. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. It's a pleasure. Always nice to be here at Shell Point, Terry. Well, we hear over and over again that well, they'd like to have some of your classes on the island. So we're going to try this session in the social center on the island. And it's a beautifully renovated building, and I think it's going to be really nice. This is a part of the world that really intrigues me. And just when we think we understand, or just when we think we've got a handle on it, things change. First of all, I'd like to say, Terry, that uh, most of us don't realize that, in fact, Pakistan has a great and glorious history, but it's in the past, as history tends to be. Amen. And so, for instance, um, if we go back to one of the world's largest civilization, greater than Egypt by a factor of one and a half to two, was the Indus civilization which was in modern-day Pakistan. So Pakistan could stand up with honor and say that although there wasn't a Pakistan in those days, the area that they now occupy was the Indus River, Indus River civilization, and it was the greatest, largest set of city-states in the world at that time, which is around 2000 BC to 1500. Why don't we go there to look at the great uh, monuments that are left behind, like we do in Egypt, because they were neck and neck with Egypt in terms of building great grand buildings. Fascinating. They unfortunately built in mud brick. So all that is gone, and people have used it for b buildings since then. The British use it for the railway lines, etc. So if you go to the great cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, which were the greatest cities in the world, they're just a pile of bricks and there's nothing really of significance. So it's a tragedy that Pakistan at one time was a dominant culture. Um, Afghanistan, in its own way, also had a significant empire. Um, it was the, the Mughal 
emperors, who we know from the Taj Mahal, who ran India for 350 years before the British took over the um, rather degenerated rulership of the Mughal Empire. But for 300 years, the Mughal Empire was a beautiful um, site in terms of its wonderful constructions and its palaces and its forts. And people still go today to look at these wonderful like the Taj Mahal and the Red Fort in Agra and the Red Fort in, um, in New Delhi and also Humayun's tomb, one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. So the Mughal Empire was in fact an Afghan start. The leader of Afghanistan moved south. And so the, the history of Pakistan and the history of Afghanistan is greater than we see today. We see today a couple of pretty burnt out, worn out um, desert kingdoms, if you like, war torn, political strife, um, questionable organization, dubious loyalties. Um, but I've been heartened in the last 18 months. There's been a change in that part of the world. And that's why I'm interested in doing these talks again. Because, for instance, in, uh, I would have lost money because when Afghanistan was turned over um, to their own people and the elections took place, mm -hmm. I would have thought the Taliban would have run over right. the whole country and it would just collapsed. Not so. It's not by any means what we'd like it to be, but it's a lot stronger than I expect it to be, and we'll talk about why that is and what the dangers are and how the Taliban and the, the democratically elected government um, are trying to force, to force themselves to work together to try and avoid the conflict, which is still going on, you know, even weeks and weeks. Um, we see these suicide bombers in the Helmand province, etc. So um, very difficult circumstances. In Pakistan, only in the last six months, there's been a, a dawning of light on the Pakistan government. They, as you know, um, are responsible for, notionally for looking after the uh, tribal lands on the border with Afghanistan. And this was the area where um, the Taliban and um, also um, uh, other terrorists um, who we know far too well from 9-11 mm -hmm. would hide from the United States troops um, in Bora Bora, which um, they moved across to Pakistan, then back into Afghanistan. And so Afghanistan, the drive of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda out of um, of Afghanistan has been hampered by the fact they all nip over the border mm -hmm. when the authorities arrive. And the Pakistan government hasn't done anything about it until recently. And the, the, the recent event that catalyzed this was tens and tens of children were killed deliberately um, by these extremists from inside Pakistan. And suddenly the uh, Islamabad government woke up and said, we can't allow this to go on. And so now they have, if you notice quietly, they have progressively enforced the law in the Pakistan side of the border. And there is hope, hope, I think, that this, both sides of the border may become less of a war zone, but we'll have to see. Wouldn't that be fabulous? It would. Be wonderful. Well, we can't wait to hear the whole story. We start with prehistory, and of course, with you, we go through history till today. And it hasn't been that long since you were back. No, no, that's right. Last year, I was there in Christmas. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I hope you take an opportunity to join us three sessions, three Thursdays, they're all at 4.15 in the Social Center. They're all with Professor Adrian Kerr. Resident Paul Neighbors returns to talk about more computer clinics with Terry Galath. In the Resident Computer Center at the Woodlands, you can get computer help every morning at the walk-in clinic. In addition, they are now offering help to our Shell Point artists who are taking part in next year's Ageless Creativity Exhibit. Paul Neighbors and his team are ready to assist you with the online application process. Here's Paul and Terry to give us more information. Hello, I'm Terry Coleth, and I'm here today with Paul Neighbors of Rosemont. We're talking about something new that just might be right for you. Thanks for joining me, Paul. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk about something you've created, um, walk-in computer clinics. But before we do that, I want to refer back to something that I find to be very interesting, and that is how you got involved with computers. Mm -hmm. And it was back in the days of the fighter pilots. Tell us what happened. Well, I was a fighter pilot in the early 50s, and uh, IBM and MIT were developing computers to control uh, the planes to uh, shoot down Russian bombers that we thought were going to come over and bomb us then. Uh, the very few fighter pilots were willing to uh, allow a computer to fly their plane for them. But my interest in computers uh, convinced me that that was something I wanted to do. So I spent uh, a while working with that computer system, and then from there I went on to uh, graduate school and did a lot more study and then spent 
another 50 years working with them and have enjoyed every minute of it and still enjoy every minute of it here. So you absolutely flew by computer alone. You were one of the first. That just boggles my mind, Paul. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I find to be so wonderful about you is that you know not everybody is as comfortable with computers as you are. Right. And that has led you to do something that I think is so wonderful, you and your team of instructors. Every single morning in the Woodlands Resident Computer Center now, you can come in and be helped with your computer. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I started uh, working on this for a good while ago, and uh, finally, with Terry's help, uh, was able to get things set up. So from 10 to 12, every morning during the week, uh, I will be there, and I'll have at least one other instructor with me. And any problem that you have, I've talked to a lot of people here who, who don't get into a lot of things they'd like to do on their computer because of problems that they're having right now. Sure. The thing that we'd like to do is that with the walk-in clinic, you can walk in there and take as much time as we need to go through whatever your problem is to understand why you got into the problem and how to avoid you getting into the problem in the future. And how to get them out of the problem. How to get out of the problem. And so once we do that, then that means that that opens you up to do all the other things that you've always wanted to do that you were afraid to do. And what's wonderful about this, Paul, is it's one-on-one -on -one help. Right. It's not hoping that the class talks about the issue you're having, no. right? This is all one-on-one. -on -one. When you walk in, there's no limitation the amount of time we'll spend with you, no, no limitation how many times you can come in. As long as you're making progress, we'll sit there and work with you until you can do anything that you would like to do on your computer. And so a number of our um, computer college instructors have made this commitment, one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, and you on Friday. Right. But you've also made the commitment to be there every day. I'm there every day, right. Every single morning somebody can come in. Now the list of specific helpers, you're there for as a generalist, mm -hmm. but there's a, somebody who look at, looks at specific aspects of the computer. That list is available at either service desk right? for those who are interested. We have the schedule there for Right now, that may change as time goes on. And uh, if you find that there's anything that you're interested in doing, uh, no matter what it is, I've got uh, a lot of resources I can call on to do things. And so if you want to do something that your first visit there doesn't uh, cover what you'd like to do, I'll get the resources to do it and invite you back in for another time when I can have the resources we need to get into whatever it is you want to do. The beauty of this is what we're noticing across the spectrum with technology People are more interested now in how do I do it rather than why do I do it, right? Mm -hmm. And to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one assistance with someone who loves computers, it's just fabulous. I enjoy it very much. I've always enjoyed teaching and helping people learn to use computers, and I enjoy it every day here. That's fabulous. Now, another thing you've agreed to do, which we're delighted about, is to help our artists who are interested in joining the Ageless Creativity Exhibit. Right. There's an application process, and some of it is quite technical. So you've also said that you're available to be contacted any morning in the Woodlands Computer Center right. to help um, people with that technical aspect mm -hmm. of their application for ageless creativity. Sure. If we need to take pictures for you or scan things, get them into the documents you need to do and, and get them set up so that you can transmit them, uh, be glad to do whatever we can to, to uh, help get that done. Paul, thank you so much. And thank you to the team you've assembled in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. Now, I'd like to just say that we have the afternoon hours available for one-on-one, -on -one, and we have a wonderful core of resident volunteers available daily in the Island Resident Computer Center down in the tunnel where you can just go in and do your own thing. But if you want to um, focus on a specific aspect of an issue you're having or something you want to learn with your computer, there's that free walk-in clinic in the mornings at the Woodlands. Right. Thank you. Well, I think you'll probably want to take advantage of some time or just stop in and say hi to these very generous people who are sharing their knowledge and their love for computers with us. And if you're thinking of um, an application for ageless creativity, Paul Neighbors is here to help you standing by. Thank you. And now it's time to take a look at today's happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley. And I'm Caitlin Van Scoy. And we're going to tell you the activity lineup for today. At 7.15, we have a Health Connections class, Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That's in the Health Club down on the island. The Men's Golf Association will be at the Shell Point Golf Club at 8 o'clock. Also at 8 o'clock, we have the Round Robin Doubles Tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. 
At 9.15, we have an interest meeting in the Osprey Room. This is if you're interested in golf croquet. 9.30 is the time that Current Events Group will be meeting in the game room of the Woodlands. Also at 9.30, the ladies match play tennis will be down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Paddlers Club will meet at the kayak storage to take off at 9.30 for their weekly paddle. An introduction to line dancing will be down in the health club at 9.45. At 10.15, we have basic line dancing in the health club. Our Suzy Q boat's going to Rum Runners today, or Fathoms, depending on which you choose, and they leave at 11 o'clock. That's our morning. Here's Caitlin to tell you what's going on this afternoon. Thank you, Bev. We start with Mahjong at 1245 in the Library Lounge. And at 115, we have fun and fitness in the community room of King's Crown. Some of the card game will be played at 115 in the Resident Activity Center. Also at 115, Shuffleboard is available at the Shuffleboard Courts. 2 o'clock is the time for the Stamp Ministry to meet in the Stamp Room down in the Island Tunnel. And at 2.15, we have a Health Connections class entitled Skin Cancer that's at the Village Church that is sign-up required. At 2.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Advanced in the Health Club, and that is currently closed. Seamstress will be here for her weekly service at 4 o'clock in the Osprey Room. And at 4.30, Alcoholics Anonymous will be meeting in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. Pinaka will be played in the Library Lounge at 6.30. And 7 o'clock is the time for a Trailblazers Bible study in the game room of the Woodlands. Well, that's all we have for you today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Thursday. At 8.15, we start court pickup on the island for on-the-go number four to the Sanibel Historical Village and Museum. At 1.30, iPhone Basic Apps. We'll begin in the cove at the estuary. Sign up is required. At 4.30, the Suez Canal, St. Catherine's Monastery in Mount Sinai will be offered in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands and you can sign up right at the door. Tomorrow, we have those wonderful free walk-in clinics, iPad, iPhone in the morning and the Macs in the afternoon. Menus for Thursday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is roast beef with mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. The dinner special is the crystal carving board for $13.95. The soup of the day is country cabbage. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a chicken Waldorf salad on a bed of lettuce for $7.75. The dinner special is Thai night for $8.75. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Thursday are New York strip with chimichurri for $19.95 or roasted halibut for $19.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with Norm McDowell. And uh, the reason why we're here with Norm is because uh, you're involved with an organization that the Village Church uh, really loves to support, and that's the Gideons International. And you've been involved in the Gideons for how many years? 39 years. 39 years. And uh, you're not from around here, are you? No, I was born in Northern Ireland, Ballymena, Northern Ireland. Fantastic. And Nin you... 1931. Okay. <laughs> and, and were you involved in the Gideons uh, before you came to the United States? Oh, yes, completely. I was five years with the, uh, the camp in Reading. Oh, I see. And uh, from there, then we, we decided to come to America. Fantastic. Well, that's we're, we're glad you did. We're delighted that you're here. And uh, one of the things we want to do is we want to talk about the Gideons uh, as an organization because we're going to have uh, one of your members, Jack Denman, is going to come this coming sure. Sunday and uh, share some testimonies about uh, how the Word of God through the ministry of the Gideons has affected people. But let's sort of back up and uh, provide a, a foundation for that. Tell us a little bit about the history of the Gideons. How did it get started? It started over 100 years ago. Two traveling strangers met by chance. One was a paper salesman, John Nicholson. And they didn't reach his hotel until 9 o'clock on the night of September the 4th, 1898. And it was, he wanted a quiet room. That was all he needed to write up his orders. So he went into the center of the hotel in Boscoville, Wisconsin, bulging with people and noisy and drinking and smoking and cursing and yelling. So they, they told him then his worst fears were concerned, were confirmed. Every room was filled, a last-ditch solution. 
So the, the, the landlord said he wanted to help him because he was a regular customer. He said, we have a man with us tonight by the name of Sam Hill, a good clean fellow. And there's a spare room and bed in his room. And if you're, if you're both willing to share, you could have it. So he took Nicholson across the lobby to meet Hill, who was right of his orders. The fellow salesman agreed to the arrangement. In room 19, later that evening, Hill rolled over to go to sleep. Excuse me, if I keep the light on a little longer, Nicholson said. I always make a practice to read the word of God and speak to him before I retire. Read it aloud, Hill told him. I'm a Christian too. Nicholson read John 15 and the two prayed together. Then he and Hill started talking about the need for Christian traveling salesmen to know about each other. By 2 a.m. they had determined that they should start an association. How about that? So they actually began because of this, what would what the world would call a chance that, meeting. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, they got together and recognized the value yep. of uh, having an opportunity for people who are traveling all over the place yep. uh, to have an opportunity to read the scriptures. Uh, and Did that's they a, know how it would grow? Oh, since, indeed. Since that. <laughs> incredible, incredible. Because as we talk, uh, everybody in our audience knows about some aspect of the Gideons because they've all been to hotel rooms. That's right. And they find uh, the scriptures in the hotel rooms, and that's, of course, uh, the primary, I guess, the ministry of the Gideons. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's the one we're best known for, yes. but really we're going to every country in the world. Every year we go to new countries mm -hmm. that have never had the Word of God in their own language, so they get the printed Word in their own language for the first time. Wow. And so you're involved uh, with people who are doing the true translations and then yes, still placing absolutely. scriptures, absolutely. Uh, placing scriptures in all over the world. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about what's happening around here. Obviously, uh, you're, you've, uh, rec we've recognized that uh, there are a lot of things happening around the world, uh, but uh, you're involved in a group here yes. in this area. Uh, you call yourselves a camp, right? That's Is right. That the they idea? call them a camp uh, over yeah. in, in this country, and they call them a branch in England. I'm not sure what they call them in Canada. Maybe a group. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, last year, just to give you the facts, 2015 to 2016. In Lee County South, which is the name of our camp, there's actually three in the area, North Fort Myers, and then Fort Myers, and then Lee County South. And we go right down to Benita Springs. But last year, we gave out 550 hospital testaments, 2,000 college, 2,000 sidewalk youth, 100 Gideon facilities, 1099 Gideon personal workers testaments. That's the ones that Gideon just give to anyone they ever meet. I see. Uh, and uh, they give us personal work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was also uh, auxiliary, uh, who, 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 that's the ladies give out 450. And there was another festival of, of uh, Fort Myers Beach, a shrimp festival, and we gave out 3,000 of that. So that's quite a good total for one year. Indeed it is. Yep. And I think the underlying message in all of this is that there is, and obviously the Gideons just don't want people to become better readers. They want some lives transformed, right? That's correct. Yeah. That's the whole thing. It's yeah. uh, that people are reached and saved. That's, that's what the whole yeah. ministry is about. And yeah. I like to give out personal work. I give out maybe about four or 500 a year myself. Wow. And each one, I don't know where they're going, but I like to pray that people will be saved through them. That's right. The word doesn't return void, we believe that, and that's why we do it. That's exactly right. There is a, there's an inherent power in the Word of God, and I think that's the kind of thing that drives the Gideons there's forward. No question and about so that. And so when people have encounters uh, with, with the Word, uh, a lot of times people are, are changed, aren't that, they? That is right. Yeah. yeah. And of course, when Jack comes, he'll give us some testimonies about uh, those kinds of encounters. Now, that's about uh, what you've described. Distribution as abroad. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about what happens abroad. You've talked about what's happening in the area. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of things happening over There's overseas. over 300,000 Gideons and auxiliary members. That's the wives of the Gideons, mm -hmm. and more than 11,900 local groups. On wow. the USA, 80,000 Gideons and 40,000 wives of auxiliary. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, 3,200 camps in the USA. More than two billion Bibles have been given out since 1908. Now, I'm just wondering, did you say two billion? Two billion, yes. Good grief. It took, the wow. first billion was only uh, quite, not, not maybe about 14 years ago, and the second billion came in 14 years. It shows no you, kidding. It shows you the difference in, Incredible. in, money in those wow. years. Yeah. Over 88 million copies of God, God's Word were distributed last year. On average, more than two copies of God's Word are distributed per second. 
Over one million Bibles and New Testaments are distributed every four days. Well, uh, Norman, it's been great to, to be with you and to hear more about the ministry of the Gideons. Uh, it's a ministry that we have a great deal of affection for because we love the Word of God and know the power of the Word of God. And we're delighted uh, that you have such a history with it. Well, it has enriched my life, no it, question about that. Indeed, it has. Uh, it's, and you've been with it a long time, but we know a lot of other people who have participated in it. Well, we're thankful that you're uh, listening to us today in Village Church Connections, and we hope not only that uh, you'll be reminded about the Gideons as well as other opportunities to support uh, the charitable works that uh, glorify the Lord Jesus, but uh, we trust that you'll uh, find this to be an encouraging word, and we're glad that you joined us today for Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Return tomorrow when we'll hear more about the Open House event at the Springs for the Waters Watch Community Launch. Also, we'll bring you the top stories from this week. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Thursday, February 25th. On behalf of everyone here at SBTV, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.